Hi everybody, it's Christina Mascari from Pretty Distress. In today's video, I wanna show you that you can decorate your home sustainably. I am going to be taking a piece of furniture I got off of Facebook Marketplace and making it over for my home, and I'm taking it one step further to be even better for the environment. I'm using a really clean and green paint and sealers that are all natural, environmentally friendly. The paint is even 100% organic. So if you wanna see this makeover, just keep watching. I'm gonna be working on this mid-century modern beauty today. This is a find from Facebook Marketplace. Now, don't, don't get mad at me, but I paid $400 for this. Yes, that is a lot of money, but this style is in high demand. This is an authentic vintage Brohill premiere. It's in rough shape though, so it either needs to be refinished or it needs to just be given a different look. And some people might be mad at me, but I am going to paint this today. But but stay with me. This is going to be fun because this is for me. And I've got a little twist since Earth Day is coming up. Not only did I want to focus on sustainable decor, but I wanted to use some really clean products. So I'm teaming up with the real milk paint company to do this makeover. This paint is extremely environmentally friendly and it's actually 100% organic. It's safe for kids and pets. So I'm gonna be giving you all those great details later in the video. Typically with my videos where you see me working with milk paint, I like to do a really chippy, distressed old world finish, but milk paint can do a lot more than chippy finishes. And today, because this is a very modern looking piece, I'm gonna do a modern look with it. I'm going to be doing a dipped look on this piece. I'm pretty sure this veneer is walnut and it was really, really beautiful once I started stripping it. So I'm going to strip the top third of it and do a raw wood look on that. And then the bottom two thirds I'm going to paint. So stick with me. It's going to be beautiful. Before I got started sanding, I did actually wipe this down with some vinegar and water because I'm trying to keep this as environmentally clean as possible. And once that was dry, I grabbed my sander and some 120 grit sandpaper and just started stripping back the finish. I knew this was a veneer, so it's really better to start with a medium grit sandpaper because you don't want to blow through that with a really coarse one. And then I grabbed my foam pads. This is also a medium one, and that was helping me get on these curves. And this finish came off really easily, so you can tell that it is definitely failing after all these years. Now, I don't want to intimidate you with the fancy sander that I have. You could definitely do the stripping process with a regular orbital sander from the hardware store that costs like $50 to $100. And Surf Prep actually has their foam abrasives in a bunch of different sizes. So that's kind of a little bit of a hack. You could order some of their foam abrasives to help you get on the curves and things. This project took a lot of sanding and my sander couldn't get in every little nook and cranny. I actually did have to do a little bit of hand sanding on these doors. After everything was stripped, I came back in with a 220 just to smooth everything out. And I did kick up a lot of dust sanding. So the remaining portion that I'm going to paint, I'm just going to clean again with vinegar and warm water. And then I'm going to come back in and rinse everything with some warm water. If you are not so concerned about this being super environmentally friendly, TSP soap is going to be a better option. It's going to break down that wax and polish that might be on here much better. I did just want to note that I did have some veneer damage on the drawers and then this wood that is on the doors in the inlay is a different type of wood. It is not walnut. So I'm going to have to address that later. And this foot was cracked when we moved it. So I'm just putting the little stopper back in there, adding some wood glue, and I'm going to clamp it up to dry. It is always a good idea to wipe back that excess glue so you don't have to sand it or razor blade it off later. Okay, now it's time for the fun part. For the top of this piece, 
the wood is beautiful, but I wanna give it a little bit more of a muted modern feel. So I'm gonna create a wash with my milk paint. Um, if you haven't seen me use milk paint before, this is how it comes. It is a powder form that you mix yourself. I love how this one comes in a can and then the bag is separate. So you can actually mix the paint in the can and you don't have to have a separate container. And it actually comes with a marble too to help you with your mixing. Typically when you're mixing this, you want to do a one-to-one -one ratio. So one part powder, one part paint. But since I'm doing a wash, I want it to be more see-through. I want it to act like a stain. So I am going to do two parts water, one part paint. A good tip for doing this is you'd want to use distilled water. It's just going to help with the mixing of the paint and the adhesion and everything. Once you get all your parts in there, just go ahead, add that marble, put the lid on, and then you're going to give it a good shake for five minutes. So make sure that your muscles are ready. After you shake it up, you just want to let it set for 10 to 20 minutes to make sure all those pigments are evenly distributed throughout the paint. It can be really foamy after you shake it up and I'm going for a smooth finish so I don't want foamy paint today. So I'm gonna add just a couple of drops of their anti-foam agent and it's gonna make all that pop and go away. This consistency here is a lot thinner than if you were doing the paint full strength. Again, remember I'm doing a wash, so that's why it looks like this. I am going to apply this with my zebra brush. This is one of their new top coat brushes and it's three inch and I have grabbed some clean cloths to have on hand to wipe back my wash. I am gonna test out a spot on here just to make sure this is the color that I want and everything. Normally, I wouldn't recommend doing this. You should just do a whole section and wipe it back because you don't want it to get streaky. After testing it out, it was looking exactly the way that I wanted it to. So I just applied it to the whole top. I like to go in the direction of the grain. It just helps it look a lot more natural. And once you get this all painted on, then I just come back in with those clean rags and wipe in the direction of the grain. So I'm just gonna repeat this process in small sections over all my raw wood pieces. And this color is called Cheesecake and it's a really, really, really light beige. So what this is doing is just kind of muting the walnut out a little bit and it's gonna give it like a beautiful neutral look and kind of take those orangey and yellow tones out of it. And it's gonna look completely different when I seal it, when I put the wood wax on, it's gonna get even deeper and beautiful and richer. So just hang in, you're, you're in for a treat on this one. On all these little rounded edges and trim pieces, I'm using my zebra round brush because it really helps get into details like this. Again, take note of these little inlays on these doors. They are completely different color than the rest of the wood and I'm still kind of panicking about that. So these insets here were clearly just stained to match the walnut. Um, since, you know, this is a walnut veneer, you can't really get veneer in curves and stuff like that. So I am going to have to address that down the road, but I'm just moving forward right now. Okay, so I've got my wood portion all stained and it has dried. And so now since I'm gonna do my dip look, I need to tape this area off to get ready to do my paint on the lower two thirds. So I'm just using a level and kind of marking where that should go. And I'm using the drawers as my guide on the front and then kind of just wrapping that around the side too and just getting my tape nice and level so I'll have a beautiful crisp line. And speaking of super crisp lines, I'm going to give you a really good tip for getting crisp lines on your furniture. And the tip is you need to set your tape with the color that you are painting over. So I've just grabbed my cheesecake and I'm gonna set my tape. It's gonna get the tape wet and really lock it in. So when I go to add my paint color over this for the bottom two thirds, I'm gonna get a really, really beautiful crisp line. And while that dries, I'm just gonna take a fine sandpaper and scuff up this remaining portion that I'm about to paint. I'm a huge fan of scuff sanding. It's not always necessary, but it does help your paint stick better. And when you're working with an old finish like this, it's always a good idea to scuff sand if you have the time and if you're willing to do it. So I'm just wiping back my dust and now I'm gonna get ready to mix up my paint for the bottom portion. I went ahead and mixed this paint up off camera. I'm gonna be using Arabian Night, which is their darkest, deepest black. And since I'm going for a modern smooth look and I don't want any chipping, I'm gonna add some Ultra Bond to help it adhere. And I'm also gonna add that anti-foam like I did in the beginning. And for this portion, I've grabbed my Zebra Palm Pro. I love the way this applies milk paint and it's super easy to hold and it gets into nooks and crannies really well. So it's gonna be a good all around brush for this. 
As I mentioned earlier, I really challenged myself on this piece to make it as sustainable and earth friendly as possible. And what's awesome about this paint is not only is it environmentally friendly and non-toxic, it's even food safe. That's how safe it is. It's 100% organic and it only has four ingredients. I started furniture flipping to save money because I couldn't afford new pieces of furniture. And you know, by the time I'm done with this piece, even though I spent $400 on it, it's gonna look like a piece that cost $1,500 or $2,000 like on West Elm. One thing I've really come to appreciate over all my years of furniture refinishing is just how sustainable it is. Like it's so great that we can take these pieces that someone doesn't want anymore that might be destined for the dumpster and not only save them from the landfill, but repurpose them and make them look beautiful in someone's home and give them way more life. And you know, we're not adding to the clutter of the world. We're kind of bringing demand down for new pieces of furniture. So I just really, really love that and wanted to highlight that today. I might get some hate for leaving the handles on while I'm refinishing this, but honestly, it was just easier and I they were wooden and I was gonna refinish them anyway. So hopefully people don't come for me for that, but they probably will, it's okay. This paint dries it really quickly, so you can actually recoat it in 30 minutes as long as it's dry to the touch. So I came back in and added a second coat. And I noticed watching this back how dangerously close I am getting to my perfectly whitewashed raw wood up there. So maybe I recommend using a little bit of a wider tape or just not getting so close to the top of it. I also took a little artist brush and made sure I had all these little nooks and crannies all the way up to my tape. This is where I ran into a little bit of problem, but nothing that can't be fixed. You know that chippy beautifulness I was talking about? Well, I got some on my drawers and this could have happened for a number of reasons. A, because I use vinegar instead of TSP soap because I was trying to be clean and environmentally friendly, or these drawers could have just had a lot of polish on them. Maybe I could have scuff sanded them just a little bit more and it would have stuck. But anyways, this only happened really bad on one drawer, but I was a little bit nervous about it. Um, so I decided to strip all the drawers down to raw wood and repaint them. Now, let me tell you that Milk Paint loves raw wood like this and it looks so smooth and so beautiful and you don't have like any brush strokes. So if you are willing to strip your piece down completely that's probably your best bet um, I don't think this is always gonna happen because like I said it didn't happen anywhere else except on the drawers the doors were fine and the sides were fine and the feet and everything so you know it's up to you what you want to do and now for the most satisfying part of this entire video peeling back my painters tape look at that crisp line you guys this was the most <laughs> exciting part of this makeover After this was dry for four hours, I'm ready to seal. And to keep with my green clean theme, I'm gonna be sealing this wood with wood wax. This is 100% natural as well. It's made from plant-based materials. It's eco-friendly and it's actually food safe. So you can use this on butcher block. You can use it on cutting boards, on spoons, bowls. And I love this product because it's gonna give you the shine of wax, but it's gonna have the long-term water protection of oil. So it's very versatile. This works really, really well with raw wood and you can see how it's just deepening my walnut color and just making it so rich and beautiful. And then I'm gonna be using this on top of the paint too to seal. This is really easy to apply. You're just gonna use a clean cloth to apply it. I'm using old t-shirts because those are really easy to use, lint-free, always have them around the house. And when I'm doing over a dark paint like this, I do like to use a dark rag as well. A little bit of this goes a long way and after it sets on the piece for 10 or 15 minutes, you just wanna come back in with a clean cloth and buff away any excess. You wanna give your item five to seven days to dry before using it and then to get this to fully cure, you're gonna to have to wait 15 to 30 days, which is pretty typical with any sealer that I use. Okay, now that I've got my wax on, the inlays on those doors look even worse, but luckily I had a water-based walnut stain on hand and it just happened to be the perfect match. So I'm just painting that on with a little artist brush and it looked really great. 
Okay, so who's ready for my Earth Day sustainable, green, clean makeover reveal? Just to remind you, here's what I started off with. It was really beautiful as is, but I am so excited about this after. This is going to look gorgeous in my family room. I'm going to use it as a media console, and I'm going to be doing lots of makeovers in there. So definitely stay tuned. I will show you once I get it in my house what it looks like. I hope I opened your mind that milk paint is for more than just chippy old finishes. It looks beautiful on modern finishes too, and it's clean for the environment and it's safe for your family. So I hope you guys check it out. I really love this makeover and I can't wait to get this piece in my home. If you're a little sad that I painted this, don't be sad because I have another piece that matches this that's a chest and I'm gonna try my hand at completely restoring that thing and trying to sell it. So we'll see how much money I can make off of that one. I'll be back next week with another project. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time.